related party, IAS24. Now, it is usual for entities to transact business with individuals and or entities that they share some relationship with. Now, when such happens, the parties to this type of transaction become related parties. Now, related party situations are not necessarily illegal, but they can cloud the business's judgment, leading to conflict of interest, as they might show some favorable treatment for close associates, which limit competition in the marketplace. It might also lead to charging a price below the market price or perpetration of a fraud and so forth. Some transactions may also transpire just due to the existence of a relationship, so withdrawal of which might affect the fortunes of the business or might cause it to tank. So it is therefore imperative for all related party interests or transactions be disclosed to users for them to be properly abreast. Now, a classic example of the downside of a related party is the infamous scandal of the US-based energy and commodities company based in Houston, Enron, which occurred in 2001. So Enron was a US-based energy and commodities company based in Houston. The company used related party transactions with special purpose entities to help conceal billions of dollars in debt from failed business ventures and investment. The related parties misled the board of directors, their audit committee, employees, as well as the public. These fraudulent related party transactions led to Enron's bankruptcy, prison sentences for its executives, lost pensions and savings of employees and shareholders, and the ruined enclosure of Arthur Anderson. Enron's auditors, which was found guilty of federal crimes and SEC valuations. Now, this financial disaster led to the development of the Sarbanes Oxley Act 2002, which established new and expanded existing requirements for US public company boards, management, and public accounting firms, including specific rules that limit conflict of interest arising from related party transactions. Now, let's take a look at what related parties are. Now, a person is related to a reporting entity. So here when we talk about a reporting entity, it is a business that is preparing its financial statements. One, the person or individual controls or jointly controls the reporting entity. So here control is as defined in IFRS 3 business combination, where one is simply supposed to hold more than 50% shares of another business. Secondly, if the person does not control but have significant influence, also can be found in IFRS 3. Okay. Thirdly, if the person is a key management personnel of the reporting entity or is a key management personnel of a parent of the reporting entity. Fourthly, if that person is a close member of any person that either has control or joint control, has significant influence or is a member of a key management body of an entity. Now, an entity as well can be a related party to another entity if the following conditions apply. 1. If the entity and the reporting entity are members of the same group, meaning one is a parent and the other being a subsidiary, or vice versa, or are both subsidiaries to a common parent. Secondly, if the entity is an associate or a joint venture of the other entity. Thirdly, if both are joint ventures of the same third party. So it means that there are three joint ventures to an arrangement and the two of them are of the three. So the other point is that if an entity A and entity B are joint ventures of an institution, if an entity C is an associate of entity B, it becomes a related party to entity A. Okay. And the next point is that if both entities are being controlled by a single person, they become related parties. Then we move on to the situation where that individual does not control but has significant influence on both parties. Then, if they share a key management personnel, and lastly, if the entity provides key management services to another entity, or they provide key management services to one entity who is within the same group of another entity. So, if entity A provides key management services to entity C, and entity B and C belong to the same group. Entity A and entity B become related parties. Okay. Let's look at situations which does not mean they are related parties. One, when both entities have a director or a key manager, until they become a key management personnel, they have the power to influence the operations and decision making 
of the entity. Secondly, when two ventures share joint control over a joint venture. Thirdly, financial institutions, trade unions, government agencies who do not have control over the entity. And lastly, customers, suppliers, distributors, agents, just because they have significant volume transparent between them does not just make them a related party. Okay, there has to be some relationship that might cause some undue advantage to be given to them. Okay. Let's look at the related party transaction. This is the transfer of resources, services, or obligations between a reporting entity and its related party, whether they charge a price or not. Okay, so we can have examples such as sale of goods from one entity to its related party, purchasing of goods, rendering of services, receipt of services, sale of assets, purchasing of assets, lease agreement, transfer of research and development between related parties, transfer under license agreement, transfer under finance agreement such as loans, then provision of guarantees or collateral. There are a lot that we can go on, but we just limited ourselves to this. So whenever the is the related party transaction happening within a certain financial year, an entity and the IAS 24 is obliged to disclose one, the nature of the related party relationship, whether it is a subsidiary or it's an associate or it's a parent or it's a member of a key management personnel that the transaction was done with. Two, information about the transaction. Was it a sale, a purchases, a transfer of assets? Then, if they didn't pay in full the amount outstanding, what are the commitments that they have given? Have they committed to pay within a certain amount of time? Have they left a the collateral? What efforts have been put in place for that debt to be cleared? Okay. Also, compensation information on key management personnel must be disclosed in the financial statement. So, it can include short-term employee benefits. Their post employment benefits, that is when they retire. There are other long term benefits, termination benefits in case they don't get to their full term of employment. Then share based payment benefits. All this must be shown for users to be brought into the book to make meaningful decisions.